Sure, sorry about that. Um, well, I wanna first of all, welcome everybody. Uh, thank you for taking time out of your busy Saturday afternoon to join us for this update. Um, we'd like to talk about a couple of things and I will move right into the agenda page. Um, first of all, welcome to all of you who have joined. I see some faces on our guest list here. Um, many of you I know, some of you may be new, but uh, we thank you for your support and um, hopefully we have some updates and information for you that'll be interesting. I think you might find our, um, our next steps to be uh, very interesting. So let me start though with uh, this agenda. Um, we'll talk about the current um, status, the good time bill package, that is the bills that are in the house. Um, I'm gonna give a hint and Mariah can decide if we should um, tip our hands that we are also hearing noises about a potential introduction in the Senate. But the real, um, the real reason for the meeting today is gonna be this third bullet point, um, you know, discussion about a ballot initiative. And then uh, that naturally leads into a discussion about roles and responsibilities for volunteers and how we can actually organize uh, a ballot petition to make this thing work. Uh, so with that, um, let me move right through it. All right, first let's talk about where the current bills stand. Um, officially, this package of four bills was introduced on April 25th. Um, I put together this simple table so you can see who was the lead sponsor on each bill and give you some contact information on them. Uh, this bill then moved into the House um, Committee on Criminal Justice, which is chaired by uh, Representative Kara Hope. <clears throat> then the, uh, the vice chair is also a Democrat, Joey Andrews. Uh, another name that you might see and, and be familiar with is Rep. Graham Filler, he's the Republican Minority Vice Chair on this committee. And here are the members <clears throat> of that committee. So right now, the purpose of um, uh, putting this up here is that we are asking people to contact this committee, contact the chair and uh, contact if you have a representative that you are a constituent of on this list, we'd like you to contact your representative and let them know, even if they're not a constituent, I'm sorry, if they're not on the committee, you should still reach out and get to know your lawmakers. And right now, we'd ask you to look for your House representatives and encourage them to put pressure on this committee to give this bill a hearing. Um, the issue is we're moving towards the summer recess now. <clears throat> uh, that means unless they put this bill package up for a hearing uh, before, say, the end of June, uh, we don't think that the the bill will get a hearing this this summer, this spring rather. So that means it would spill over into the fall session. So question is, you know, what do you do all, all summer long, right? And that's what we'll be talking about in a minute. Um, I'm going to break with norms. A lot of time I put Q&A at the end. And I know Mariah is going to shoot me, but do you have any questions about what you're seeing in front of you now? Let's, let's open it up and use the... Uh, Raise your hand button if you would. Let's see if you can um, uh, pose any questions at this stage of the game on the current package. We'll give it a second. I don't see any raised hands here. No, and I don't see anything in the chat. I did put the link uh, for those who'd like to email their lawmaker directly. Uh, the preform mm -hmm. letter uh, is at mijustice.org slash 2023. So you guys are welcome to share that. That link will stay live for the rest of the year. We will modify it as needed as, as things change, um, but that will be the live link for this entire year. Um, <clears throat> and along with encouraging your lawmakers, we have put a link on our website. If you go there, it will uh, help you generate a letter that will automatically get sent to your lawmaker based on the district that you're in. You will provide your um, your address, assuming you're a, a registered voter in the state of Michigan. It'll look up your uh, address, and then based on that address, it will determine who your senator is and who your uh, member of the House of Representatives is. It'll create a letter. You'll have a chance to edit that letter on the website. And then it will also send the letter to other key stakeholders, like the governor, 
Attorney General, Secretary of State. Um, and to date, we have only had, uh, Mariah posted this number, 5,700 emails have been sent. But that's good news. That means, you know, given that there's only, what, 38 senators and 110 representatives, or maybe it's 28 and uh, 110, um, that means every one of those representatives and senators has gotten at least one email uh, urging them to support this package. We'd encourage you to continue to do that and share this link, uh, share that web page with others. Um, Mariah, remind me again, or if you put it in the chat, um, just let people know what that link is on the website. It's real easy to get to, it's right? In the chat, yeah. Yep, that's the mijustice.org slash 2023. Um, you can send that email more than once. Um, it's not going to like stop you if you've already sent it once before. And the offices are receiving it. When we talk with uh, the offices, usually their front desk person who gets their general email, they are seeing this and they do tally every single one that comes into their office regarding issues. So the more they receive, the more uh, important a topic it is for their office to discuss and address. Mm -hmm. Yeah, please continue to pester your lawmakers. They represent you, they work for you. You pay their salaries through our tax dollars. Um, with that, I, I put the question mark in here, and Mariah, I don't know if you wanted to touch on this. Um, we're only hearing rumblings at this point, but the idea that there is the potential for this bill to also be introduced in the Senate. Yeah, so uh, Rep O'Neill, who is our lead sponsor in the House of Representatives, has been contacted by uh, Senator Sarah Anthony, uh, who is a former representative who was involved last year in our work. Uh, she has indicated to Rep O'Neill she would be interested in picking up this package on the Senate side and leading the charge for us on the Senate side. So Rep O'Neill's office and Rep uh, Senator Anthony's office are having conversations uh, to work on getting the copies of the bills ready for the Senate, but the discussion has been given where we are time-wise in June, uh, and the Democratic Party leadership has been very clear that they want to finish up everything budget-wise before they break for summer session. It is very unlikely that the Senate package would be introduced before summer recess, so indications are that sometime in the fall that the Senate uh, package would be introduced, which in many ways gives us time to talk to the senators that we may not have met with yet or discussed this with, though we've done a good job meeting with a lot of them. Um, that would give us time to build up the support and hopefully have a large list of names signing with Senator Anthony when she introduced in the fall. Yeah, and all this is very encouraging in my opinion. Um, again, this is about raising uh, the, this topic up in the public square, getting a discussion going. And, you know, we're not alone. This bill package is one of several different criminal justice reform packages. Um, there is productivity credits, there is second look, and there is juvenile life without parole. And some of those packages are actually getting hearings. That means they're moving. What we want, of course, is the good time bill to also move. But we can learn a lot from the way things go on productivity credits, say. You know, we can listen to the feedback that uh, um, testimony of people who are uh, testifying for or against. We can start to understand where some of the concerns are based on that feedback. And it gives us a chance then to be prepared for those kinds of questions when the good time bill finally gets a hearing. And we do believe it'll get a hearing. It just won't happen until the fall. So. With that, let me move back. Whoops, sorry, what was that? I uh, Someone unmuted, you're fine. Okay, let's talk about what we wanna do through the summer months and we're, we're already starting the process. What we would like to do is um, get a good time ballot initiative started. Um, uh, hold on for we... a second, Jack. I'm not sure who's currently. That would be Jay Smith I'm seeing. Jay, can you please stop drawing on the screen? I'm just going to remove them. Yeah, thank you. Uh, sorry about that. You should be all set. Got it. Um, yeah, and just keep an eye out in case uh, our friend returns. So what we want to do is start a um, 
a ballot initiative. And, and in fact, it's in our roots. MJA got started through a ballot initiative in 2020 called MPRCA. So this is where we take this to the streets and we take this to the people and we ask people uh, to sign a petition. It has to be a, an actual handwritten petition signature collected on a, a piece of paper. Um, but this is another way to get laws passed. You um, collect enough signatures that the question could be posed to the, the voters of the state of Michigan at large in the November 2024 ballot. Move forward. <clears throat> so what we have done is we've gone ahead and produced a ballot <clears throat> based on the exact same language that's in the good time bill package. Uh, it will fit on a legal size piece of paper, an eight and a half by a 14 size sheet of paper, which means this thing can be printed easily by anyone with a printer that can handle a legal size piece of paper. Um, having this way of distributing the sheets and um, sharing them widely is really going to help make the signature collection process that much easier. Uh, in the past, the uh, signature sheets had to be large and they were on, on non-standard format paper. Um, many of the campaigns had burdened the, or bared the burden of cost of producing, you know, the printed copies. And we believe by having it on a more common piece of paper that anybody and everybody can print out or go to your local printer, it'll reduce the cost for us. It will reduce the cost for you if you're having it printed by a printer. Um, and it will make it easier for you if you're going to print it at home, which, by the way, we have confirmed with the uh, State Board of Canvassers that that is a permissible means of distributing this um, petition. So we can distribute the officially approved copy of the, the petition to uh, our volunteers who are willing to uh, help take up this charge. <clears throat> and you can print that on your own printer. So, you know, um, provided you're using the uh, form that we are getting approved by the board of canvassers. So they've already approved the 100 word summary. And this would be the summary that, you know, when you go to the ballot, you've seen uh, those ballot questions. We had three on the last uh, ballot in 2022 in November. And the wording of that is supposed to be a neutral um, summary of what's on the backside of the, um, you know, what you're asking for in terms of proposal. We've already had that approved, so that's good news. And now we're in the stage of the game where you give them the full form and they just look it over for um, you know, text sizes, fonts, font sizes. It's more of a form and fit type of uh, exercise they're going through. We've submitted that along with some printer copies for um, printer proofs and a printer affidavit. Um, we're waiting for the board of canvassers to get back to us. And when they do, that means we can start the process. Any questions at this stage of the game? No, I nope. look like we had another spam good. person, but it looks like we're good otherwise. Good, good, good. Um, here's a look at what this signature sheet will, will look like when we finally get it approved. Don't take this one as the uh, gospel truth here. This one is still being approved by the Board of Canvassers, but notice you'll be able to collect 10 signatures, and so we can start to do some simple math based on that. Um, again, we can get the, the file distributed once it's approved, and then people can start printing these up and collecting signatures. The backside of the petition, which is a little more cumbersome, is what contains the actual language of the proposal. And the way this works is you take the existing uh, statute and you do cross throughs and capitalization where you're adding and crossing through where you're subtracting. Again, don't take this, it's hardly legible, but uh, you can see that we have moved in this direction. The good news, as I said, is, is this fits on an eight and a half by 14 or legal size piece of paper. All right, now this is where we're going to need help from volunteers. Um, we're going to try and get oh, you guys mobilized. You one question from Karen. Um, so okay. I'll let her... Yeah, let's let's entertain the question as it goes while it's fresh on your mind. Go ahead, Karen. Hi, I'm sorry I joined late. I had some computer issues. Are we uh, have we changed the initiative of the group uh, of of what we're focusing on for good time? Will it be a ballot initiative instead of a bill? 
Well, it will be a ballot initiative in addition to a bill, right? The idea here is that the lawmakers have not yet taken up the, the bill to be put for, forward in the committee for a discussion. They haven't put it on the agenda for a hearing yet. And so we want to apply additional pressure. Um, a ballot initiative, as you know, is led by the people. The people collect signatures, and if enough signatures are reached, you know, the threshold is in the 356,000 range. If you produce enough signatures, you can bypass the legislative process. The legislators uh, will be beholden to the people. And this is the way that it works in Michigan and at many other states around the country. You can have laws initiated by the people. So yes, in a way, MJA is going to start this ballot initiative process. We're, we're going to form a special ballot um, question committee. It's kind of a different legal entity in the eyes of the state. But we, as MJA, are trying to spearhead this effort, and we're trying to use all of our volunteers now who have been gracious and, and, and helpful in, in visiting lawmakers and have said, what else can we do to help? Well, here's your chance. This is what we're asking next. Um, it's a numbers game. We have right. a second <clears throat> question here from Helen. Yeah, hi. Hi, Helen. You should be able to unmute, Helen. I can't hear you, Helen. Can we help her? I, I no, I I can't unmute a person. Zoom doesn't put that feature in place for privacy reasons. <laughs> yeah, that would make sense. Uh, Helen, if you can unmute your screen or un unmute your audio, if you just hit the space bar on your keyboard, that might do it. I don't know if she can hear us. She did, and it disappeared <laughs> for a second, and then it popped back. Uh, while we're waiting for Helen, I see another question. It looks like Michael. Uh, you should be able to unmute yourself, Michael. Oh, nope. Sorry. Another spam. Yeah, well, let's get Michael out of the picture, shall we? Yep. Working on it. Thanks so much. Um, Helen, were you able to unmute yet? No. John, it looks like. Uh, John, you should be able to. Can you hear me? Yes. yes. Oh, perfect. Uh, I did have a question. You, you said that it had not yet come out of committee. Um, it's my understanding, and you know, please correct me if I'm wrong, that there's 13 members, eight of them are Democrats. Does that mean that some of the Democrats are not in favor of this initiative? Um, I wouldn't read it that way. Uh, I think the, the picture is bigger than that. I think what may be happening is that this topic is really starting to get attention in, in all the branches of the government, in, including the uh, governor's office. And so I think the leadership of the House and the Senate and the executive branch are probably trying to decide what to do with this topic and to let it go forward or not. It's not just the committee, you know, the committee members then have to put this out on the floor and then the Speaker of the House would have to put this up for a vote. So there's a sequence and I have a feeling there's a lot of back uh, backdoor discussions or backroom discussions that we are not hearing where they are trying to figure out what they're going to do with the topic, really. Is, 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 so that's unfavorable to us, our position, is that correct? That they just, you know. I, I, it just was my opinion that everybody on the Democrat side pretty much was in agreement on this. And the huh. problem was that you had to have a supermajority in order to get this to the entire House. And I thought that was where our problem was. I didn't think there was problems with the Democrats. Um, well, um, there, so you, had, you have raised two interesting topics of, for discussion. One is are all the Democrats in support of good time? That's one of the questions. The other question is, if this comes out and has to or, uh, get a vote, what does it need to actually pass? That is a far more complicated question because of the history of the legislature 
over the course of the last three decades or so, ever since Prop B in 1978. So I don't want to touch the second one, um, but I will comment on the first question, and that is, uh, are all Democrats in favor? Uh, we have spoken with some Democratic uh, offices that surprisingly are not swooning for this topic. They're just not falling over their feet, tripping over each other to support this. So you cannot take uh, and say, well, simply because a person has a D next to their name, they're in support of good time, which is all the more reason, I believe, why people really do need to contact their lawmakers, Democrat or Republican. Because right. don't forget, we did get <clears throat> sponsorship by two Republicans. So it's not also fair to say that all Republicans are opposed and all Democrats are in favor. People yeah. Are individuals. We have two Republicans this time or last time? This time. This time. Oh, well, I'm surprised to hear that. Yes. Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah, there were 27 people, 27 lawmakers who have signed up for uh, the bill packages. Um, each uh, of the lead sponsors took one of the four bills, put their name at the top. But by and large, all 27 lawmakers signed up um, for each of those four bills. Okay. It looks like Helen has been able to get herself unmuted. So let's. Okay. Yeah. Hi, Helen. Hi. Hi. How, are Hi. How are you, Jack? Um, Good. Good. I have a question about the ballot. Mm -hmm. If you get a ballot ready for us to get signatures and there will be a date on that, how long would that be? Uh, I mean, tomorrow you get somebody's signature on there. When? Yeah. How long would that be active? After yeah. a certain amount of time, it, it probably yeah. is. Yeah, so you're, you're exactly right. Um, there is a 180-day window that all of those signatures need to be valid for. So if we start collecting today, 180 days from now, whatever the total quantity of signatures are, if you decide to turn in your signatures 180 days from now, that's when the um, Board of Canvassers, Board of Elections will start counting those signatures and auditing them. But it's not until you turn those in. So that 180 day window can move based on when do you think you've collected enough signatures? Okay. You know, by tallying them up all the time, we should have a pretty good idea as we go. There is a deadline for turning these signatures in, but that is not until the end of May or June of 2024 in order to make the 2024 ballot, right? There's just time they need to put it through their process. And if it goes through that process, it ends up getting printed up and put on the ballot. So your deadline really is the um, end of May, beginning of June. I don't have the exact date, but any 180 day window is is valid for, for collecting and turning in those signatures. But if you have a signature that you've collected today and you go out 181 days from now, well, that signature is no longer valid. You're right. That's you, would have to, you would have to re, re, uh, recollect that particular signature. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> does, does that help? Yeah, I think this could also be used to our advantage because I think it just takes time for the word to spread and for people to really start spinning up and, and getting involved. So if we started today, you know, everybody's on this phone, I could assume we'd collect what, you know, 30 signatures or something. But <clears throat> as word spreads and you talk to other people and that, that, that distribution of information and knowledge gets out there, that signature collection process is going to have a, a ramp rate. It's going to get, you know, uh, greater and greater as time goes on. So that's why it's also important for us to be collecting and counting those signatures. What we want to do is provide everyone a very transparent, real-time look at the process. So, you know, as fast as we can collect, count, and post information, we will. Um, and, and that's important to know, Jack, it mm -hmm. is a process. So just because Helen is wonderful and she has a ballot and she collects 10 signatures. That does not mean our number that we are publicly posting will show those 10 signatures. She's going to have to get us that ballot that she's collected, that she signed 
to our headquarter location. We're going to have to verify all the signatures on there, count them up and add it to our system before it gets published. So we do want people to understand this is a very large process. We are looking at collecting signatures from approximately, just to be safe, 400,000 Michiganders across the state. Um, so it is a fairly large effort. And because of that, it takes time. And so that's why we are starting the conversation and beginning the work uh, laying the foundation now so that we have the next eight to 10 months before that that June 1st deadline of 2024 to prepare and collect those signatures. Yeah. So let's, think, that, that naturally, yeah. yeah, that moves us right into organizing volunteers. And what we have is a vision for how this could get done in a very organized, methodic and logical way. You know, it's going to be kind of like, um, gosh, forgive me for this, but like an Amway kind of pyramid scheme where you have people at the top who are overseeing people beneath them, who are overseeing people beneath them. And it's it's really the ability for us to efficiently organize who's doing what, uh, have everybody well trained and um and, and just get this machine up and running. So uh, Mariah put this together. So uh, Mariah, I would like you to, to speak about the um, organization vision that you have. Certainly. Um, so obviously we're not going to be able to have one individual, say myself, organize a thousand people across the state and be able to answer those a thousand people's texts and calls and emails uh, and conversations every day for the next <clears throat> eight to 10 months. Uh, not, not physically viable or efficient. And so the idea would be, we're going to identify a few people who really are willing to step up and your strong suit is kind of organizing and communicating and you are willing to be a, a point of contact to kind of help develop these teams across the state. Um, we see it as maybe eight um, individuals scattered across the state and your responsibility as a zone, and we're just gonna call them zones, would be to really help identify local people in your community who can kind of be a lead. We're gonna break the state up uh, by Senate districts, um, only because that's a fairly easily, easy, manageable, identifiable district. Um, it can be a little bit difficult to break the state up otherwise, but that's how we're going to do it. Um, and the reason for that, too, is we are required when you are collecting signatures to have signatures from across the state. We can't just go to Detroit and collect 400 a uh, thousand signatures from Wayne County, that's not acceptable for a ballot. You have to collect from across the state to get the voice of the people across the state. So with that, our goal would have some district leaders. So someone who say lives in district uh, 38 up in the UP, McBroom, you're willing to kind of organize some local community people to collect signatures in that area. Um, we are willing to help you collect um, contact information of volunteers and people who are willing to help collect signatures and be that point of contact. We have a lot of resources and systems to help give you people to identify and talk with who have either raised their hand, they've sent emails, they've contacted us before, they live in those communities, and we can and get them in contact with you if you're willing to be that person there. Um, we also can help get some ballot signatures to you, um, along with envelopes or other, if there's a, a better way Way that we can coordinate maybe driving some ballots once you have a bunch of completed ballots to get them all to a central location for our headquarters. And then finally, the really important key people are those canvassers. So those individuals who are willing to commit to collecting signatures over the course of a six month period of time. Um, that is time consuming. It is a physical job because you physically have to get a signature on a piece of paper. Um, but it is also something that we have six months to do. We have a period of time. It's not like you have to go out this weekend and collect. And since we are going into the summer right now, we have this really great advantage throughout the months of August, September, and October of a lot of community events. People are outside. They are um, in warm weather so we can interact with them. We don't necessarily have COVID restrictions that have affected previous ballot initiatives. We have a lot of advantages. Um, so we, we are looking for those people who are willing to commit and say, hey, 
every week for the next six months, I'm going to go out and try and collect signatures and I will get this back to my district lead person who will then get it back to MJA and they can do the counting and sorting. And so ideally in the end, it's probably going to take about a thousand people across the state of Michigan for us to be successful in collecting all the signatures we need, given there's going to be some invalid signatures, there's going to be some people who just aren't able to collect all the signatures they hope to for various reasons. And so our goal would be if, if we can get a thousand people to commit to collecting a thousand signatures themselves over the course of six months, we will hit our goal and well surpass it and be able to be on the ballot for next year. And so it sounds like a very big goal, but I think we have the opportunity. We have over 12,000 names in our database. I think even looking at the 20 people who are on the call today, if you looked at your Facebook friend list, we probably have another 5,000 Facebook friends and how many of them have Facebook friends. And so I think there's an opportunity if we, as Jack said, not necessarily Amway, I like to think of it more as like a snowflake. We start at the middle and we expand out there, but yeah, that okay. idea, we're, we're starting with this core here and we're going to expand out across the state. And I know there are some people on this call here who are fantastic and really good at that outreaches and can give us some information and tools as we continue to grow and give us some guidance of ways to be successful to do that. Um, but we also know there's a lot more people that we can bring in from the MJ um, universe and supporting to be able to help spread them. So I will pause there. I know, Diane, you had a question. We'll go back to that question in a bit, Diane. That's a very uh, specific question. But in regards to the ballot, what questions do people have for the ballot? Thanks, Karen. So I took the liberty of starting to plot and show geographically where people are raising their hands. Um, this map is based on a list of folks who had responded to our email request for help over the last month, I think starting in May 15th it was, we asked for people who would be interested in helping over the summer. <laughs> we do not represent where those people are who have responded to that email. Um, we are going to create a website for this topic. And in the meantime, we have created a new email address to really separate this topic from what we at MJA have been doing historically on the legislative side. Uh, we're going to make this presentation available. It'll be posted. Um, and then the recording is also going to be available up on our um, YouTube channel. Um, but I think the time is, it, it, it's now. The, the time for good time is now. And I, I've tried to emphasize the urgency of this through this new slogan. I mean, those of you who've been with us before, you know, um, we've had good time makes good sense. Uh, but there was no sense of urgency to that. It just was simply a promotion. Now I want the legislators and everybody to get the point. It's time. This is the time for the legislators to either make a move or we the people will start to say, well, this is what we want. And this is how we're going to do it. We're going to do it through the ballot initiative process. All right. Let's open it up for any other questions. Uh, we still have plenty of time, um, but I'm, I'm not going to take it all up if you guys don't have any more questions or or ladies, uh, if you folks don't have any more questions, we'll end it as needed. But let's pause, give you a chance, find your uh, unmute button, and let's get this discussion going. So, Hello. Karen, I see your hand raised, Karen. Um, yeah, so um, on the non-ballot initiative, on the, on the bill, um, is there any, I know you said that you, you think the issue is bigger than just the criminal justice committee, I guess, um, that it might go higher, um, you know, up to Whitmer. Um, is there anything that we can do, do like with our representatives? I keep thinking to my guy and I haven't gotten in touch with them yet, but 
can we sit down with them? Will that make a difference? I think it it certainly helps, and they need to hear hear from the people who they represent. So I would always encourage you to get to know your lawmaker better, and they're approachable. For the most part, I have found these lawmakers will take the time to meet with you, especially if you're con their constituent. You've voted them into office potentially, or you have the power to vote them out of office. So <laughs> they care about you. You know, they, yeah. they do want to hear from you for one reason or another. They want to hear from you. Well, and and in my my personal circumstance, I have talked with my um, representative a couple different times. He's on the criminal justice committee, so he's part of that that committee. Um, he's not initially in favor of good time. He's a previous law law enforcement officer, I think, with the school system. Um, but is there anybody that we can tap into from MJA to maybe join us, like for a cup of coffee with him? He um, he keeps saying, you know, have a cup of coffee. I'm here on Mondays and Fridays. Who who is your lawmaker, and do you recall specifically what some of the his or her is it opposition? It's uh, Mike Harris. Yeah, Brian. so I know Jessica has tried to get meetings in district, uh, not in district, in Lansing with him, and he, they've blown us off. Um, so oh. I know Karen has been able to talk to him in district, and I don't know if we have anyone who lives specifically nearby to be able to join. So I think let's, let's coordinate that, Jack, with Karen to see if someone can be in district for a coffee hour. Yeah. Karen, where are you at, just roughly? In, uh, in um, yeah, I'm in Clarkston, and Mike Harris is in Waterford. So, you know, that's why he said, oh, you know, I'm usually around on Mondays and Fridays. He said, I love coffee. Call me up. We can have coffee. I'm like, great. I, I want to take advantage of it, but I feel like I'm not as well-versed as I should be yeah, to yeah, talk yeah, with sure. him. I, I just don't want to blow the opportunity. So. No, and that comes from experience, of course, right? And so yeah. um, Clarkston sounds like it's close. Could Is it potentially close to um, Lapeer? No? Uh, no. No. So I know um, Courtney, one of our board members, is over in that direction. And I know, Jack, that's not too far from you. I mean, it's a bit of a drive from work, but not a a far drive from work. So Karen, we will coordinate. I'll get an email with the three of us and we'll see what we can figure out for that. Well, okay, yeah, here's, here's what I was going to offer, Mariah. Um, I'm going to visit the, the, the Thumb Correctional Facility on Friday, June 23rd. I'll be up there with Senator Chang. And, and since I've already got the afternoon off, the meeting is only from, I think it's 1 to 2.30. Now, okay. whether Mike Harris would be willing to meet after that on Friday afternoon, I don't know. You know, that's where I think Karen, you would have to come in and say, well, I'd like to broker a meeting and you know, how about this date and see what he says. All right. Well, I... take that check offline to an email. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's that's right. A few other raised hands. So I do want to be respectful yeah. here. Let's so, do it. Um, Sherry, I see your hands up there. And then John will get to you next. You want me now? Uh, or... go ahead. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so uh, Jack and I had chatted offline a couple of times about some of the things that we've topics we've covered here, and recently he sent me over copies of the of the newsletters that you've been sending out, and I'm assuming those were the newsletters that are sent to um, us on the outside, not the newsletter. Not any kind no, of... no, no, no. Those are actually the newsletters we have sent into the facilities through our JPay account. Okay. Um, well, that, that clears it up for me because I think, and this is just off the top of my head, I think if we're wanting to send something into the, J into the prisons for these guys to read and then post or copy or, or whatever else, that it shouldn't be just typed words that would be more like you're trying to sell somebody a car. Hey, this is, uh, if you want to get us off the finish line, you got it. We got to have this. We got to have other uh, prisoners emails so we can contact them. We need uh, you to contact your family members, you know, 
a, a single page with large type and balloons or whatever it is to grab attention and and just get a couple of points across one one is we want all of the other prisoners that you know to give us their jmail account information so we can add them to the list and in addition to that that we would want um them to contact their their relatives and friends at home because if everybody's got a mother father two sets of grandparents brothers and sisters and cousins and neighbors um aunts and uncles we could have a lot of people all of a sudden added in but i believe that sending them typed out pages like this and i think one of them is like four pages most of it is is not really necessary information for them on the inside i don't think um that you might get uh, some more activity or responses from them. Um, just what we want them to know and do is my. Yeah. And that's, that's, that is what I have tried to do. I, I'm the author of those, um, most of those yes. newsletters that go in. And usually we reserve sending those out for when do we have some big information that we need to share, right? So we've been keeping people up to date roughly once every six to eight weeks. Um, when we saw that the bill package was going to move, we increased the frequency and we also made that pitch and that plea. Um, it so, could you know, looking at this, Jack, though, I don't know that this is going to be a call to action for people that are in, in prison. So this, I just happen to have this here. This is just a, a, a thing that came through from uh, Nutra Systems, which, of course, I need. But I think you need something <laughs> that's just going to catch their eye and, and short short and sweet and I think is what not you're read saying. not read all these pages um yeah. I don't think they're going to read them and if you post it if you post this on a bulletin board or wherever they post things there people walking through are not going to stop and read that because they're just not well I haven't been able to figure out what motivates people to be honest with you we have asked people to go and send a letter to their representatives by clicking on a link on our website. Yes. Um, and Mariah pointed out that we've gotten 5,700 and some odd people to do that. Really doesn't take much effort, right? You know, go to the website, click, <laughs> add your address. Simple. But um, I don't know how to motivate people other than to simply do what we're doing now. Well, except that uh, what I'm telling you, I think, is, is something different than what you're doing. Sending a page of words isn't going to have somebody uh stop and act i think just two big things with great big letters and something that can post and once when people walk by it they can see it and they can say oh my i can see what that says it's uh contact my grandparents and my mother and and have my cellmate add the gmail just a couple of things call to action been pending you know we're trying to get this across the finish line and it is as you mentioned in this uh the, the new uh ballot initiative it takes people and i think just to try it once and i then i think i've also explained the idea that if it's expensive i'll cover that for you um yeah, so no, it, i'm i'm gonna interject here we do yeah. have four other people who have some questions so like we can continue that conversation but i do want to allow everyone to have time to ask their questions so we'll circle back to this issue so sherry sure. you had your hand raised yeah, I simply wanted to know if particularly the slide with all of the people on the just judicial committee, if that could be shared with us. Yeah, so all of this will be posted and it'll be available in our newsletter, but you can also just Google the Michigan uh, House Criminal Justice Committee and those will pop up right at the top. They're the same list that's on the um, the Michigan State House of Representatives. Okay, but who introduced it was look useful too. Um, yes, so we have had that posted a few times in our newsletters, and that's also posted on our website. Okay. Um, I just I just subscribed to the newsletter, and then I did that on the website. Okay, as long yes. as I know how to get it. Thank yes. you. You're welcome. Um, Linda Kuz Kuzak. Kuzak. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just a quick question. I missed the first. 30 minutes of it because I couldn't find the link. Uh, will I be able to go back and listen to everything that was said? Yes, this will be on our YouTube channel probably in about two days and it will be in the newsletter on Monday. Okay, uh, am I assuming then that 
uh, this isn't going to go through the House and the House and the Senate now. It's all going to be on a ballot or. Well, we are working both avenues at the same time. So at this point in time, since summer session will be ending and they'll be taking their summer recess up in Lansing, um, they probably will not schedule a hearing before the summer session, which would be September or October for, before there would be a hearing. Um, so with that, we are preparing to do the ballot at the same time. Okay. If the lawmakers decide to, I'm going to be a little crude, get their shit together up there. And <laughs> then awesome but at the same time and rep o'neill who has been the lead on the house side is very supportive of us working a ballot um he understands that puts pressure if we collect the signatures and can go to the lawmakers and say the people want this make it happen um it will put pressure on them to do their job okay so realistically we should wait it pro nothing will probably happen this year um the mm. most likely the bill will not pass in this period of time. However, okay. depending on how things go, it could happen um, early next year if okay. they decide to have the hearings and votes. Um, okay. But we can't promise that. Right, okay. Now I live in Florida, so I, I can't really write any of the legislatures in Michigan, can I? My, my nephew is in prison in Michigan, but you I don't can know what to do um, send an actual letter um, stating how you support this and what your where your nephew is. Um, it is pretty effective, and I know Jack has a list of um, what senators or representatives cover what facilities, and so the senator oh. and representative they have power because they have a prison in their district. Oh, um, I didn't know that. Okay. Yeah. Jack, I don't know if that's on our website, is it? Um, I don't know if it is, but um, while we're talking, I was going to just pull it up. This is what um, I know uh, John and I were just talking about, is that I have sent him an example of the JPEGs that we send inside. And as a matter of fact, I, I feel bad because I have a feeling the people um, on the inside might get more and better information than the folks on the outside sometimes. Um, at the bottom... That Jack into yeah. okay, okay, I see that. Yeah. Okay. So, okay, he's. I'm trying to find his real quick. Uh, there we'll go. It, That's where he we'll is. We'll put it in the chat so that you can take okay. a moment and read and copy. Okay. It. Yep. Well, that helps a lot. That. Thank you. Yep. And I'll do I that see offline. Alicia, okay, you have your hand raised. Thank you. Hi, Alicia. You, Alicia, do you have a question? She's still there. She is. I think she's working to unmute herself. I saw it for a second. Okay. Um, I don't know if anyone else has questions there. Um, so you just want me to dump all this in the chat, eh? Uh, just those specifics. That way, people can can look and see their facility. It said, it said that my uh, it's, it's too verbose. <laughs> too many words. Okay, um, but we'll make sure we also post it to the website, Linda. Um, that way, that is accessible on our website under the the blogs where we post those. Okay. Um, Thank you. I don't see anyone else right now, Jack, and it looks like maybe she dropped off. Maybe she was having a connection issue. Um, well, she's coming back, you know? Yeah. No, let's give her a chance to come back, but otherwise, I think if the uh, questions are subsiding, we'll, uh, we'll call it a day and we'll send out the information in the next newsletter. Hey, Jack, I'm sorry. <laughs> you yeah, guys, so my phone is acting up. Hey, so I guess I just had a couple of questions really quick. So because I've been in and out, my phone's acting up. Um, so first question is, how quick are you starting um, before we start? Like, how soon are you expecting to start yeah. doing this? So I think we have to get the final approval from the State Board of Canvassers. And they were supposed to have a meeting on the 23rd of this month. But there's been some snafu, and I don't know why. So we're looking into that. We've asked questions. Um, we're, we're waiting for them to answer us. Okay, my second question is, um, where is, do we, I mean, I saw like via Zoom or via live or whatever, um, Kara Hope 
you know, saying she supports this and I whole her saw her whole spiel and all this. So do we know, and I know we don't just want people to have hearings just because they support something we want. They obviously want to know they have support. So do we know, has she given any, in, given any inclination as to like that she will put this up to be heard or do we know any, like, do we have our, any insight on that? Yeah, our feedback from Rip O'Neill's office, um, I just had the conversation on Monday with them, is that they have gotten direct um, from leadership that they need to finish the budget. And so nothing okay, else is really right. getting scheduled for the next few weeks until okay. the budget moves forward and is completed. After that time, which <laughs> will be the fall, um, right. it seems like the indication has been that there will be a hearing in the fall, but it will not be first priority. However, Rep O'Neill's office has asked us, um, and we've passed on uh, a list of supporting organizations um, okay. who are interested in supporting this. Uh, as we get closer and a hearing is scheduled, we will give people more details in regards to testimony and how that will go. Um, given the way productivity and the juvenile lifer bill hearings have gone, we want to make sure it's really tight and we stick to specific talking points because they have unfortunately cut most hearings fairly short. Um, and we want to make sure it doesn't become a, a runaway train. Uh, especially when we know there will be some hearings that will be some, there will be some opposition who get to voice their opinions. And so we want to make sure it's a very tight testimony. And if for some reason we run out of time, everybody else is being able to turn in their written testimony ahead of time. Okay. And then, sorry guys, two more. <laughs> um, so in the meantime, what do we, what can we tell people like, Hey, there's going to be a ballot initiative. Like, I mean, obviously I know you guys are having the meeting. So that was part one. And then part two um, of the first question is what can they do inside? Because I will disagree slightly with just the whole thing about people not reading, because I do know for sure that these guys are reading at least, you know, they have bulletin boards and things. Um, and the warden's forum does really, at least at Muskegon, and I know other places too. These guys really do try, like Jack said, they stay up on more stuff than what we do. Like Jay can read a, a law better or a proposal and things far better than I can. So um, what can they do inside in the meantime? Like, do we have recommendations or, or things that they should be or could be doing? Well, that's a good question because we want them to contact, like John said, we want them to contact their loved ones, their friends and family, and start to broadcast what we are broadcasting to you here now, which is that, in fact, the cat's out of the bag. Alicia, you're right. We're going to do a ballot initiative. That's what we're, that's what we're saying. So, <laughs> <laughs> so I think having them fully aware of that, first of all, information is important. So getting the news out there, uh, I think we're going to be releasing a JPay here real soon. Uh, it, it's kind of contingent upon what is this board of canvassers doing? Um, but as soon as it's ready to go and we can say, yes, it's it's on, it's live, we need signatures, is, that JPay is going out. We're going to ask people to contact their loved ones and get the file from us and start to print and produce signature sheets and go for it. We also do need the feedback of people on the outside who can sign up as volunteers. So, you know, Mariah and I and the team can start to organize this thing because the key to this is going to be organization. It can't be willy nilly. Um, it has to be done in a, con a pretty controlled manner so that we don't get on uh, overrun and you volunteers don't get overrun. So you right. need some structure in this. I mean, think of this as a military operation almost, you know? Correct. Okay. Okay. Um, and then my, I'm sorry, one more. Sorry, my last comment. Whatever. No, you, you're good, had, girl. You go. <laughs> I had drawn up my own letter and I don't know if it would, I just thought it'd be useful because I feel like the voices of people inside, like we talk about this crap all day long, but no one really like you know, we don't ask their opinion because they can't vote. They can't do any of these things. So I currently have 500 letters of support um, for the good time bill from people inside signed and sealed that I was going to drop off to Care Hope's office yesterday. Yes, I'm 
a dork. It was Friday. Why do these legislators work on Friday? They don't. <laughs> um, do you, is this something I should hold on to um, until fall? Um, do you think they care at all? <laughs> or she will care at all? I have a question for you first. Sure. Do you have copies of all of them? Copies? Yeah, have you like scanned scanned them or do you have a a second one or are they all in letters? They're all letters. Okay, so I would say we want to scan them um, and and put them in so that we have electronically so that we can submit them for when testimony time comes because that will be a very powerful um, file to be able to hand to them. But I think it's also would be helpful so that we can distribute to the lawmakers who may be in oppositions, we can give them again a, a file copy and say, here's a bunch of people who support this and why they support it. Um, so I would do that before we physically hand over the letters to anyone. Okay. Um, and then I think this is happening already, Alicia. What, what I've started to get recently are just blank letters from the Capitol. They are sending me the letters, the envelopes that are full, they're still, they're still um, sealed from incarcerated individuals that have been sending these letters to the Capitol, but not to the right address. And so they're turning around and I'm getting letters in the MJA mailbox that should be getting into the hands of lawmakers. Um, okay. So I know that they're trying to do these things. I, I really applaud their efforts and, and with limited knowledge, you know, God bless them. They tried to do the right thing and they sent a letter. It just, the people at the Capitol or in Lansing are starting to send them back to, to me, to us. Okay. We got to get them back into the hands of the lawmakers that they were intending for their letter to be seen by. So okay. I think Jack, we could coordinate then those letters that you're getting back. We could also scan in and combine with Alicia's files and have a large file to hand in when it comes time for testimony. Yeah. Yeah, I've been keeping okay. them in my file cabinet. I haven't scanned them in though too. So uh, Alicia, you're not okay. alone. <laughs> okay, I just wanted to make sure because I'm like, I don't know if they will be used. I mean, it was something that I had just come up with me and a couple other people. And I'm just like, I know there's a lot of frustration and I know it's across the board. I know it's not us, just us, but and I know we're not the ones that live this stuff day to day. So I think I had just was like, I don't know, let's just draw up a letter. So, okay, I will get with you then personally, Jack and do something about these letters so well, we go move forward so I think that's it that's all I had so sorry guys thank you thank you <laughs> I do want to like just also mention you it's something you said triggered this but we are in communication with all of the other orgs across the state who do this type of work um, from safe and just to AFSC to Michigan United to my lib we are having conversations with them they are aware that we are moving towards a ballot initiative and that is what we will be working on as we can continue to push these bills forward. We have asked for them to come alongside and help support us and we're having those conversations. Um, so nobody across the board should be shocked that this is coming. Um, and it is also very clear like the language we are using for the ballot matches the language for what the bills are and they are all working together. So it's not like we're, we're gonna change something drastically. Everything is still the 30 day credit for 30 days served, it's still, um, written as retroactive it all of that language is the same um to be able to say lawmakers you do their job or we come with the people's power and the signatures and move this forward so uh we're trying to be very open transparent and have these conversations so that there isn't confusion there's not misunderstanding what's going on we as mja are taking the initiative on this good time across the state on both fronts yeah, and we're getting good cooperative support from our sister CJR organizations. So I'm, I'm really pleased. I think, Jack, at this time, there's no hands raised. Um, if we, I'm going to stop the recording here. If okay. people want to stay on and ask any other questions, I know Diane had a question that's very nuanced. Um, so, Jack, I don't know if you want to respond to her in person or go back to the email that Diane sent us the other day. Oh, yeah, let's, let's do that.